Welcome to the virtual podcast. My name is Emily. I'm your host. Today I've got with me Dean Dewhurst, who is the founder of Golf Space, which is a an revolutionary actually when you really think about it. Indoor golf club, which is rethinking the golf training experience and community as a whole. Welcome. Yep. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. So in terms of legitimacy, have you ever hit a hole in one? No. I've kind of not even a virtual one. So not I'm even a virtual one. Not one. even a virtual one. All right, um, get out. Yeah, you're no, done. So legitimacy not there yet. Um, come super close, but um, yeah, I'll take a virtual one right now. But keep trying. That's um, okay. Well, yeah. what's your handicap? My handicap is eight point nine. Okay. Handicap. Yep. I'm I'm gonna pretend I know what that means. I I, I feel like it's good. Yeah. So you got sing. You call it like single figures is. Intermediate to good, and then you got scratch, which is zero, no handicap. That's Ooh. where everybody, if you would love to get there, it's no handicap. The tour pros are in a plus handicap, meaning they play better than the par of the course. And then you sort of amateurs are around that 18 to 25 getting into golf around there, and everyone looks to get that handicap down. So if I'm better. going to golf space weekly, yep. I'm, I'm on my way to zero. Is what you're trying to tell me. You're on your way to zero. That's, that's right. It. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to get better. That's the good thing. Yeah, everyone wants to elevate that game. Okay. And so how has Golf Space made that easier for people in terms of you know, accessibility, affordability, um, making it a year-round sport, all those kinds of elements? Yeah. So, I mean, I've when I was looking at myself in my golf journey, I was looking at how – how could I get better? And what is the, where do you go to get better? And you traditionally would go to the driving range. And if you want to have a lesson, you go see the PGA pro. And I just thought there was a lot of limitation to hitting balls on a driving range, especially these big ones that could be 60 bays, three tiers as well. And you're hitting driving range balls. So you're not really knowing what's going on other than seeing the ball flight. So I actually think that I just saw there was a, a place where we really need to practice different of how you can actually improve. So by coming to golf space, to answer your question, we're making it completely more accessible to be able to practice your game. So you don't necessarily need to go to a driving range. You can use the technology and the data to actually see what's going on with the ball flight. But also you can play as well. Like we're time poor, right? To get out on the golf course is mm. four, four and a half hours to play a round of 18 holes. And you've got to get there early. You've got to have a bit of a warm, it could be like a six hour thing. So you can come and actually play within an hour. You can actually play 18 holes in an hour, which is kind of. Right. Cause you don't have to walk in between exactly the shots. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you're eliminating so much of That's that. That's right. So it's not just a practice place to practice. You come there and you can practice on the virtual driving range and get your data and then start looking at yeah. the analysis of what's going on with the game. But the big thing is you can actually practice on a golf course. And that's the revolutionary way of using technology. Right. Because I think this is what's missing from my golf game. So I can go to the driving range yep. and I can hit it, but I can't aim it. And I think that that's key yep. is aiming the ball. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it boils down to distance control and accuracy. I mean, that's ultimately what it is. It's, um, um, but I think what's missing in the way how to get better at golf is how to play the game. Too much focus is on golf swing and the mm. technical side of where your body should be moving, should you transfer your weight and how you actually get your body into position. So there's so much focus on that and everyone's on YouTube looking at what the next tip is. But using um, technology and coming to golf space, you can actually play golf on the virtual golf course and start building golf IQ. Actually, where should I be aiming? Yeah. Where do I want to miss? Because typically you're not really hitting exactly where, um, always where you intend and then you've got to play your next shot from that position. So Right. So technically you're getting four hours worth of training in an hour if you're going to golf space, if you can do your whole round in an hour. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we get people that come for an hour, whether it's before work, just like you would like in their gym routine. We got people coming for lunch. So we've got people that come to get better and they use it like their golf gym. And then you've got people that actually come because they just love playing golf and it's mm. the fix, you know, and it's in we not one hour you're getting that golf fix. Um, yeah. So playing, playing indoor golf is actually, I think, like it's, its own, become its own sport. Right. Because playing outdoor golf on course is very different to playing indoor golf. 
it's a simulation of it, but it is very different, but it helps you. So generally speaking as well, you're kind of taking away that seasonality from the game too. So if it's pouring with rain and freezing outside, no one wants to play golf, you're taking away that barrier to entry, right? There's, there's absolutely that. I mean, right at the beginning, interestingly, when in Sydney, when we opened in February 2022, we were getting torrential downpours of rain. So, so much that the golf courses were that. closed. So when we opened up, we had this false kind of like, oh my God, we've, we're killing this, aren't we? Because it was just flooding with golfers just going, well, we can't get on the golf course. Pardon the pun. Yeah, pardon the pun. So, and then we were, um, yeah, we're off to a great start because you couldn't get on the golf course. But then everyone's got, yeah, this is a great place to come when it's raining. We're like, actually, it's just a great place. Finish there. It's just a great place to come regardless. Uh, and now I think as we were one of the early adopters to build a simulator center of this scale and mm. this type of club, and then it's really coming on now. People are just searching for this type of indoor golf experience. So if somebody were to say, see your business model and try to replicate it, what is what is setting you apart from somebody being able to actually do that? Why is golf space so different? Yeah, it's a good question. That, and, and it's a question that we've got to keep asking ourselves a lot. Mm -hmm. So what stops? It's a bit like the gym concept. You know, anyone can buy the gym equipment like Techno Gym and then set up a gym. What separates that? Similar to how I'm looking at the company that we're creating. What separates us is the membership community of each club that we're building also, the way we're looking at it, we're building golf clubs, not facilities. So I see a the distinction that I see is a, a facility is where you would just go have an experience and may or may not come back. Whereas a golf club, you desire to want to be a member of that because of the community. Because being a member, you get access to having your own um, outdoor GA handicap with us. You've got the community, we've got indoor competitions, we've got events. So what separates us is, is the experience. And the experience that we're delivering is this duality and this seamless blend of both performance and entertainment. So you can do both in one space. Right. That's why we call it golf space. Like the, the name golf space is really important to, to get out there, which I haven't shared with a lot of people is that I come from an architectural background, love of golf and design. And that was my two deepest passions. So when I came up with the concept, I was the name golf space was a bit of a drop mic moment. It was like, this is a space for everyone to consume golf whatever their journey is. Right. So it's a space that you can practice. It's a space to come and learn. It's a space to come and play. It's a space to come and entertain, all wrapped up in golf in one space. But it was designed that if you want to practice, here is a unique space to come and do that activity. If you want to come and learn, there's another space within the club to do that. If you want to come and entertain, well, then you'll go upstairs to the simulator lounge for the entertainment part. So there's lots of pockets of design of how we designed it to be specifically... Right. A space for golf called Golf Space, yeah. So you're raising funds to expand and introduce this mezzanine level at the moment. What does that look like? Yeah, so the, I mean, why now is because we're hitting membership capacity at the peak times. So if you're a member, we've got close to 500 members now and the members have got 12 simulators to get on and at peak times, Monday to Friday, it's, it's, it's busy. So you're joining a wait list to get on. Okay. So... We put the mezzanine in. It was an empty warehouse. I could see the vision of what this could be. So we put the mezzanine in um, with the provision that when we hit a certain milestone that we'd be ready to uh, uh, go upstairs and add more inventory and more simulators. So the space that we visualize upstairs is what we call a simulator lounge. So downstairs we've got simulator bays. The distinction is the track man, which is the technology sits behind the player and a beautiful cabinetry, joinery cabinetry. And that tracks the ball from, from behind. Upstairs, the technology is in the ceiling, which allows us to have beautiful couches behind oh. the player. So it becomes a simulator lounge. But up there also is beautiful furniture for breakout area. There's a whiskey and champagne bar for events, a pool table. So it's a lot more social upstairs. I love so the, it. Yeah. So the vision upstairs is like this social area to, to experience Golf downstairs, you could be practicing and also hanging out with mates, but yeah, it's a very different experience. So this is at the one facility. Where do you foresee it going in the future? What are the additional plans for golf space? So we've got two club concepts. So golf space, we see it in all of the major cities, but in the inner outer area of the CBD. And 
a golf space club that we've got in Alexandria is two levels, all the areas that we talked about to practice, learn, play and entertain. The next concept that we've got is called Golf Space Black, which is a ultra premium, deluxe members club based in the CBD of all the major cities in Australia. Right. Yeah, so this is a members club. So imagine Soho House meets St. Haven and golf. And it's a desirable membership that you would love to be part of for a select number of members. In there, you've got ultra beautiful amenities, um, gorgeous simulators, amazing bar. So it's a place to network and you'd, you'd love to be a member of Golf Space Black to sort of bring guests and play golf, connect, meet other members. Amazing place to be. I love this idea. Yeah. So coming up with that, obviously it's a huge expansion point and it makes it a little bit more exclusive, a little bit more niche, something that probably hasn't been done before. How will you go about getting the right facilities? How big does a facility need to be for that kind of expansion and how would you go about actually attracting members to the space yeah good good so so the gold space club that we've got now is about 1500 square meters so, so that's it's quite big it's a big space yeah yeah big space and and that will be replicated so once we've completed the mezzanine expansion on that club that club will be replicated and taken around but that's a full club and that can have a capacity of 750 members so a big club huge big club the city Golf Space Black version is around 250 members club. That one will be around 700, 800 square meters of space. Eight simulators, private simulator bays for, for, for coaching, always on PGA coaching and um, areas to network and connect and drink, socialize, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, that, that's the Golf Space Black version, yeah. Right. And do you envision having an ambassadorship kind of program to get people involved and, you know, wanting to actually go in, become a member, sign up, experience that lifestyle? Yeah. And you asked how we're going to attract members. So um, one of the things I'm really big on at the moment is talking to the audience that we've got and asking them what their opinion is. So we've really got into this personalization of really getting to know our audience. I think that's key. So anything that we've made a decision on, we've asked our audience first, like, what's your opinion? Doing a quick survey and they've been super responsive. And I think our audience and network have loved that we're engaging with them first before we make a decision, i.e. we asked them, what would you like to have upstairs? And the decision was 4K deluxe simulator lounge with whiskey and champagne bar. I'm like, great, well, that's what we'll do. Um, that's what we'll do also with Golf Space Black and we'll build a wait list. I love this concept of building a wait list and then engaging with that wait list audience to really understand what they want. So I want just design all the amenities within Golf Space Black until I actually talk to the audience about, hey, well, what do you want? What sort of changing room do you want? What sort of, once you understand that, I can ensure that we deliver exactly what they do want. Right. It kind of feeds into what you're doing now with an equity crowd fund. Essentially, you're going to the crowd. You've already got a great community of people, but you're building this larger community of potential shareholders who are going to come on board yeah. and be your best brand ambassadors. Is that part of your strategy? I love it. This is, I, I, I think it's the equity crowdfunding makes so much sense to Golf Space to do this. We've got an audience that love it and they're fully engaged. So why not capitalize on that and bring them into the journey? Because mm. this is the ethos of golf space as a company is like bringing everybody on and it's a journey. It's a journey. The golf, your golf is a journey. It could be brand new, beginner, whatever. It's a journey, right? Forget about the destination of being whatever handicap you want. It's, you got to enjoy the, the journey along that way. And the same thing with, um, with the way we want to approach this as well. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So let's rewind. Yeah. What's your background? So you, obviously golf space is relatively new. What did you do before? What led you to want to become a business founder and actually start a company like Golf Space? So my background, I'm from the UK, been here 20 years. My background is 20 years in architectural leadership recruitment. So my day-to-day -day job prior to Golf Space was working for small, medium and large architectural practices that would engage my consultant services to go out and headhunt the most amazing talent for their business. So that was what I did. And I've got a deep passion and understanding for the people that are behind architecture. So I just, I love design, everything about it, about design I love. And so I was really passionate about the people that were behind the companies that were driving it. So 
that's what I did. And um, at the same time, I was just an avid golfer and was frustrated with my own game as how, how could I get better? So I actually, back in 2016, bought a golf launch monitor and put it in my backyard. That's how obsessed I was to try and get better at golf. Right. So I'd set up this projector and screen at home, literally in 2016, I think I bought this thing. It was like $15,000 as well. Like what do you mean? So it's, a little, it's, a, it's actually a little contraption that you'd hit a ball into a net in my garage and it would tell me the ball flight distance it would have gone and, and I was trying to learn how to get better and at golf. And you spent $15,000 I was obsessed, this. obsessed with just, I was curious enough to just go, what's going on here? So in my recruitment firm, we moved offices. There was a boardroom and I looked at that and I was like, we could put a simulator in here. So we put a golf simulator in my office in around 2017. And um, so I was using golf technology really early on and just wanting to get better, but I was, I was using it myself. So I'd go get a lesson with a PGA pro, but they weren't connecting that I had. So I'm telling them I've got this technology, but they weren't giving me a lesson that was connected to this technology. Okay. So they were really focus on, on the goal swing, but then I'd get back and I was like, this is not working for me. I'm not getting better. So I just thought there's a better way and there's a gap here. And why is no one um, designing and building a club that has this technology housed in it. So what I was doing in my recruitment office, I was using it for events with my clients. I was inviting people around to come and play indoor golf for fun. Oh. I had a pool table in the office. It's a pretty cool office. We had a pool table, we had a golf simulator and we'd have these nights. And I was like, this is just awesome. And no one had really ever done indoor golf, certainly in a group environment. And then at the same time, I had a mate who was a PGA pro who came. He was like, let me, let me watch how you play. And instead of fixing my swing, he said, let me just have a look at the decisions that you're making on the shots that you were taking. Okay. And he was like, going, why are you aiming now? Why are you playing that shot? And I started to realize, okay, this is how to practice. Ah, it was like a light bulb moment. It was like, I can use on course virtual golf to put myself in a scenario that I would be on a golf course. And it was like a light bulb moment. It's yeah. like my analogy is like, it's like learning to play tennis or practice in the serve in a car park. It's like, you're just hitting a ball, but actually then I was hitting into target. So maybe a long winded answer, but I was using technology early on. And then when COVID came and wiped out my recruitment business, said to let go of all the staff. Yeah. And I was like, I've got this burning desire. I just think there's a great opportunity here to blend my two passions, which is golf and design. I'm a customer that wants to get better at golf, but I'm frustrated. And it's like that classic entrepreneurial moment where mm -hmm. you just go, I want to be the person to solve this. I want to change the way golfers look at practicing because the driving range, typical lesson to driving range to golf course, that journey is a little bit broken because yeah. you're not practicing on the field of competition. You're practicing on an open field on a driving range. When you get to the golf course, it's completely different. If that makes sense, you know, it's not, you're not practicing on a golf course. Yeah. As someone who has hit a golf ball at a driving range and played mini golf, I feel like there might be some challenges there. For yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. I think for, for new people coming into this sport, and certainly I'm a big passion, I've got a big passion about getting women and girls into this sport as well and like growing it. So how do we make it so accessible, so exciting for someone to come and want to try this sport? Mm. So if we make golf fun, like fashions change golf. You know, golf is now looking at as, a, as an athletic sport rather than this, people used to say, oh, it's spoiling a good walk. It's like, yeah. we don't really know what golf is yet, but now we're making it, it's a super athletic sport where people are doing golf training to get fit for golf and it's fun, right? People are just, so we're serving it up in a completely different, different way. Yeah. There's a lot of elements of it that I think I would like, you know, you're, you're in your hot girl walk, you're yapping away, you're in your fun little outfits, there's drinks at the end. What's not to love? Exactly. That's right. It's right. And everyone's got this, this expectation of it's a difficult sport and it, it, it is to master, but it's not to have fun. You know, there's a big distinction there. Mm. Like, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got this expectation, you're going to hit the green every shot or you're going to place the ball exactly where you intend every time. Well, that's not the idea of the game of golf. You know, it's, it is a tough game, but it's about where you're going to miss. But yeah, so we, the more people that try the sport in an environment like an indoor environment and come and have drinks and enjoy it, I think it's going to bring so many more people into the sport. Yeah. I also think such a huge barrier to entry into a sport like golf is how expensive it is. I was blown away yeah, when yeah. I found out how much one round of golf is. It's extremely 
extortionate. Yeah. But then again, you're paying fifteen thousand dollars for a golf simulator at home. So, so this, who this sport is an incredible audience in terms of passion and how much golfers are prepared to spend yeah. on this sport. I mean, I played at Pebble Beach. I had the pleasure of there. It was seven hundred fifty dollars a round. And but what? it's just like yeah, seven hundred fifty dollars. Was it worth it? It was worth every cent. I mean, it's just it's. It, what I love about golf is that you get this. It's just this wow moment. You arrive on the golf course and it's like, oh, my God, this this is incredible. And it's a whole day and it's a whole experience. And I was like, just bringing that into golf space. How could we create that wow experience, mm. but in an indoor golf club? I think that's really kind of important. So when I get people coming into golf space, I want them to go, oh, wow. This looks amazing. And then when they go and have a look at the similar base, go, oh, wow, this is amazing. And they go upstairs again and see something different. And we're creating that sort of wow experience. Yeah, um, I think that makes a whole heap of sense because I think when I consider starting it with the girls and we're all sitting around thinking, we don't know where we're going to hit this ball. This could go anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. Do we want to spend over $100 each to go on a round of golf, which – we might not ever finish because we might lose every ball that we own, you know? It's, yeah, that's true, yeah. So that in itself, wouldn't you want to know that you're actually going to be half decent, that you're going to know where the ball's going before you actually step foot on a golf course and invest in that round and go It's a really good there. point. It's a really good point. And I think what's good about the sport is that there are these transition moments to going to a place like a Pebble Beach, which is at the top end, right? And you've got um, – so – what a great place to go and try getting into golf by going to an indoor golf club mm. and playing virtual golf and sort of seeing if you like it to start with because it's replicating the exact experience but just in an indoor. I mean, the simulator, uh, the projector, the quality of the graphics now and the immersiveness of it, it's it's unbelievable. So it is a great place to start because, yes, it is, it is expensive or it can be perceived as expensive but I know that the value is there because if you're enjoying your four and a half hours and you're socializing with the group that you're playing, it is an amazing experience. So the value to ratio to experience, I think, is there. I mean, to answer your question, it is an expensive sport. You could be spending $10,000 on a golf set now. A driver used to be about $500. It's like nearly to get fully fitted for a driver. But one club could be like 1500 bucks plus. That Maybe hurts my more. feelings. That it's is a, offensive. It's very different to like tennis where like a tube of balls might cost you 15 bucks and a racket's $350. Like very different and $25 for a court. But it's interesting that this audience does value this and people are spending so much money now on their fashion and on the bag that they've got. And But this is what's driving higher participation rates into the sport because mm -hmm. it's becoming cooler. It's interesting as well, I think, that you're providing a facility and a community so that people, if they don't have people to play golf with, they can meet them there. You've got that connective element That's as it. well, yeah. which yeah. is so nice. Yeah, and it's a good point. I think um, the golf clubs, the outdoor golf clubs, really are getting better at, at that as well. Like that, that post round where you go for a drink after, I really wanted to make sure that that was coming into golf space. I mean, when I play golf, I'm a member of, Bonnie Doom, which is a great club in, in Sydney, I will jump on the timesheet and join in with anyone. So I'm super social. I just like going to meet other people. You? And, <laughs> and, then, and we're, we're looking to do that as well. Like, so you could turn up to Golf Space as a member, yeah, and we want people to be jumping in a simulator bay and playing with others. So we do tournament nights. On a Thursday night, we do this um, four-ball Ambrose team event. It's called Dream Team. And you join in with the team, and it's four, four players all playing in one simulator Awesome. As one team. It's so much fun. Like drinks, it's, everyone's just having fun. No one's letting anyone down as well. Like Ambrose is a format where you all tee off and then you all as a collective choose the next shot to play. Oh. Right? So no one's letting anyone down. No one's then got that fear factor of, oh, I, I can't play golf. So we've seen this in the events that we run. And it's really pleasing to say that when we run these big events, it's 50-50 gender balance, which is great. So we're seeing a lot more... Um, the diversity coming in to come and try out the sport and not everyone needs to be a good we, we, we've got this line so you don't have to be good to have a great time you just have to be there and just have some good fun so that's that's helping big time when people have fun they want to come back yeah so since op opening golf space so i'm tripping over my words here what have been the key traction points that you've seen that has indicated to you that this is something that people want and need in their lives so we did a survey 
to the entire audience because I was like, okay, what do they, what do they really want, right? So we did this great survey, just a really simple question like, how many of you really want to improve at golf? Have a guess how many people want to get better. 90%? 95% want to improve their game and they're prepared to pay for it. So when we decided to understand what they want and they also valued a premium environment, they mm. valued the community. So you got, like, we started to understand what they want. So we did a, a transition from golf space, love your game, which is our strap line to golf space, elevate your game. It might seem super simple, but that shift in elevate your game was the whole ethos of what we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to elevate our game in the way that we did all of our marketing and what we do, but also elevate the customer to that next level. And what does that look like? That looks like we now need to start giving them education on what is and how to use the technology. So what does the numbers mean when you're practicing that are relevant to you? So part of our growth journey is providing education programs that are really helping you to decipher what the data and the technology is all about. Yeah, right. So we're really starting to understand our audience and what they want and start to give um, that to them, which is super important in any business, right? It's really just listening and understanding. Yeah, the voice of customer is always such oh, a huge impact to, in It's the just business. so many just don't seem to want to do that type of engagement. But for me, it's a hundred percent key, key to the business success. Yeah. It's paramount. I think looking at your revenue numbers as well, they're through the roof, considering how new a business you are. Can you talk a little bit around that and then what you're kind of hoping to emulate by, you know, engaging new facilities? Yeah. So at the beginning, when we opened, we didn't really have a lot of data and analysis on what is the right price point as well. So like you could go, what, what did you learn along the way? And we, we, we picked a price point that for a casual visit was a little bit higher than I typically wanted to do, but to try and encourage to come, to come into membership. And we was a bit stingy at the beginning on how much hours we would give for a membership. Um, and then what has shifted that big rise that we've done is when we shifted to the Elevate Your Game, we created well, what, what would be the best membership in the world that we could create for our customer with the highest value, the most stickiest and the most unbelievable service we could get. Well, just what is the best thing that you could do? And then what's the most unbelievable price that you could come up with? And that's what we did. And that was our campaign. And that worked extremely well. That goes on this bit of a hockey stick in terms of customer acquisition rate and people then um, coming and being a member and staying. Right. Yeah. It's a big, that was a big shift in the success that we had. Okay. And what did it, what did you start at in terms of a price point and an hourly membership that you got per week versus what you have now? Yeah. So we probably started off being around 50, 50 casual visit to member acquisition. And it was almost like $80 for an hour at the beginning because it was pouring down with rain. We were saying, yeah, it was quite expensive, but the, the idea was that was the price point. It was new and, but to encourage, well, be a member. But we just didn't have enough to understand the the value of that. So you get things, you know, you can't always get things right in the first go. And then you can quickly change that by asking and, and getting that right. Um, Would you say that that was the biggest mistake you made when you started the business? Or were there other mistakes that you've learned and grown from? Looking back, I would say that the pricing was a pivotal moment in terms of the change. Yeah. What we did in December last year is we installed the driving range. So we had um, a beautiful driving range that we got. It was actually, believe it or not, for one player. It's actually you would hit down. So right at the beginning, I had this innovation of designing the most incredible area to chip so you could practice hitting on these targets. And I was bringing in this research and innovation to have lights light up. So we spent a lot of time on trying to make this area work. And ultimately, it didn't work. That failed. Um, oh. And I'm happy to say that you try things and they don't work and you go, oh, it was good for one player, but it was commercially not very good at all. So the price point was a bit off. And then the uh, one player driving range just wasn't good. So we installed the driving range, which completely opened up the opportunity to have this new membership of off-peak and driving range balls. So we just started to just, as you learn, iterate, get the right um, formula yeah, right. And then we started to get the success there, yeah. And what has been your proudest collaboration or, you know, kind of achievement to date? Probably the one that we've got right now is, is um, well, we've, we've just signed a four-year memorandum of understanding with the University of Technology, Sydney. 
So wow, the, okay. yeah, this is an exciting one. So um, we're able to say that now because we've 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 signed this agreement. And what this is is a collaboration with the University of Technology Sydney to do groundbreaking research and innovation into golf practice, golf performance, right? Which is huge. So that, and if I go right back to the beginning when you said like what got me into this, so back in 2021, I was speaking with golf professionals. There's this one professional called Thomas Peterson who had a golf app that you could input your results to understand what's called strokes gained analysis. I won't go too much into what is strokes gained, but it's a way of understanding your percentage chance of the next shot or how many shots you should actually take between this distance towards getting in the hole. Okay. I, back then in 21, was trying to come up with really innovative ways for how golfers could practice. So we got research and development from Australian government to do research and innovation into working towards how could we use technology in a purpose-built facility to help golfers get better at golf. So I've been like just driven towards this. And now to see that turn into an official collaboration with the University of Technology Sydney is gold because they are PhD level. We've got CSIRO government um, backing to be able to delve into two projects. One is AI and the emergence of AI and coaching and look towards how can we use AI in golf coaching and golf analysis and bring that into the fore. So do you imagine that AI would replace a, an actual coach, a physical coach? I wouldn't say replace because I don't this? think you can ever can, but I think the world that I see is you would walk into a golf simulator. It could be like a, a deep fake coach that says, right, Emily, let's uh, hit some shots. Let's see what we're working with. Love it. You'd hit a couple of shots and then the AI coach would say, right, Emily, what we need to do now is I want you to do X, Y, and Z. I want you to try this. And every time you do it, you hit the ball, the data gives you the outcome of that shot. And then the AI coach can iterate and say, I want you to try this. That so is so cool. Super cool. And that's a world that I see and um, proud to be working with the UTS towards that. So that's one project. And the other one is doing evidence-based practice research into well, what can indoor and golf technology actually really help you perform mm. out on the golf course. So another thing that I did, which was crazy, I spent my own money was uh, I'm a member at Bonnie Doon. I paid TrackMan to 3D render my golf course. It cost me another. I what say do you that. mean? So I wanted to put my local golf course, my outdoor golf course, on the simulator. Dane, your obsession and, runs so deep. Obsessed. I'm so obsessed that I actually spent, I won't even, I will not even say uh, on this what the cost of that was. But that was my commitment to showing the whirlwind because we get a lot of golfers that come in and go, this is great, but it's not that realistic, is it? It's as accurate as it can be because I'm in the same trees at Bonnie Doon outdoors as I am on indoor Bonnie Doon. Stop. So I put Bonnie Doon, we rendered it as in 3D, so turn it into a 3D replication on the TrackMan simulator with the view of going, okay, one day I want to be the person that's going to prove that practicing on a virtual course will translate to getting you better on the golf course. Mm -hmm. So I want to actually par my local course by practicing virtual Bonnie Doon to then actually go out on Bonnie Doon and actually do it. So working with the University of Technology of Sydney, we're going to work on these programs that does actual on-course performance indoors really truly translate. And what is that outcome? So they're working with cricket and the women's cricket to see through biomechanics how we can get the first women's bowler to bowl over 100 miles an hour using biomechanics. So these are all the innovations that we're going to bring in. It's like, so we could then offer you a program that as a new person to golf, do this program and it will absolutely help you perform, not subjectively, scientifically proven. Because in the world of golf and you go to YouTube, it's very subjective. Yeah, right. And I would like to have evidence-based practice. So that's my mission is to provide evidence-based practice that actually says if you're a junior, this is a junior program that actually will get you better using technology, data, analysis. It will, it will help you perform. So that's my mission. I'm on <laughs> Bit of a crazy mission. I've put a lot of money behind this. Um, it sounds like drive. your obsession will keep you going, though. So the, it's the fuel that you need. Yeah, yeah. And 
Well, I think the good thing is because I want to get better myself. So I, when I went on this journey, I realized that I'm not alone in terms of this obsession with this sport, right? It's, it, I was asking other people, they go, no, no, I, I'm very much the same as you are, as in like just obsessed thinking about it and also frustrated in the same way that is, why is one day I'm really good mm. and then the next day I'm just hitting it all over the place. Like what, how, how can that happen? It doesn't happen if you play tennis or play it pool. It does happen if you play tennis. Oh, right. I grew up <laughs> playing tennis and some days it was like I'd never held a racket. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's well, your next sport to get obsessed with. Well, g golf is very is is just one of those sports that one day you think I've cracked this, and next thing you're like, oh my god, what's going on? So, um, yeah, yeah. Speaking of the tech side of it, do you have an app where members can kind of connect or keep track of or their visits or their progress, anything like yeah, that? Yeah, great question. Yeah, so part of the the reason why we're raising and there's there's two milestones that we're doing. One is to build the um, club expansion at Alexandria. The second one is to launch the first Gold Space Black. And then with the capital raise, if we hit the maximum subscription, is to develop our own booking app and community app. And that's what um, we're going to put a lot of time and effort in. So that's a real, you'll connect with other members. You can say, I've got a booking at seven. Who wants to come and join me on that? I love that. Yeah. In there, there'll also be the opportunity um, to engage in our programs, education programs. So a big thing for me is producing content, education content. Um, is a big thing and that will be done through an app as well. So that's part of the continual evolution of developing this brand, you know, ensuring that people have the right content to really be able to improve their game through, through yeah. quality content. Well, I can honestly say I've never been so excited to talk about golf. Uh, when I saw your pitch video, for example, I was blown away. You knew how I felt about it and to see what you guys have been able to achieve in such a short space of time and to have such a clear vision of what you want to achieve in the future, I think is really inspirational. So thank you so much for coming no, to chat with that. me. It's yeah, been no, so brilliant. I appreciate that. And uh, it's been, it's, it's that whole journey to get to where we are has been amazing. And then also just this, this period as well, doing the capital rise has just been also an incredible process and journey, you know, and long may it continue. I mean, this is the next milestone. And, um, and then we'll just keep on continuing. Let's hope you hit it out of the park, <laughs> get a hole in one. Yeah. Uh, I'll let I you know, know when I get my first hole in one. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'll be waiting with bated breath, but thanks for joining me so much. No, Dean. thank you. Good conversation. Yeah, thank you.